Hi, this is uh, Bob from Hobby Concepts, and today I have got a new way to um, servo operate the fifth wheel coupler on Tamiya semi trucks. Now, I've done a video on this before, showing how to mount a servo up in here on a on a plate and run some some uh, push rods through. This way is much easier. You don't need any extra parts that don't come in the kit except for a, uh, a micro servo. It works really great and it'll work on any uh, to me a semi truck. Now this happens to be a, uh, a grand hauler frame that I'm using but it works on Euro trucks, it works on king haulers, globe liners, every uh, truck I've checked it'll work just fine. So it's easy, I'm going to show you how to do it. Let's get started. So as I mentioned um, I've got a new way to do these remote coupler servos that's real easy and uh, very hidden. So let's take a look at the pieces I need. I've got my coupler plate. I've got a Tamiya coupler that's assembled. This one happens to have the MFC switch in it. Um, but it's just assembled the normal way. I've got the uh, ball connectors. I've got a couple screws to screw this onto the plate. And then I've got a uh, a two millimeter screw that came out of the the parts bag for this and then I've got this digital metal gear or analog metal gear micro servo so and it's got its hardware bag so that's what I need uh, I need only the pieces that came in the kit and this little servo don't need anything else now uh, I'm gonna grab a few things including my servo tester and we'll show you what you have to do to make this work and it's pretty straightforward. Well first thing I'm going to do is prep my little tie rod. So I need a couple of these ball ends. I'm going to take this two millimeter screw and I'm going to take a pair of uh, wire cutters, big heavy duty ones, and cut the head off. Use a pair of needle nose pliers to hold it, and we'll screw the ball end on it. And then we're going to screw the ball end on this one. And when I'm done, I'll have a nice little link like that. And that's going to be my link to go from here to the servo. So the next thing we have to do, the servo is going to mount, it's going to glue to the bottom of, the, of this platform, kind of like that. But what we have to do is cut out this area here on this side. We're going to make this bigger so that I can get the servo arm sticking up from the bottom. So I will mark it with my X-Acto knife and then we'll cut it out with a Dremel tool and we'll cut off. There's a, there's a piece right here you can see. Cut that off make this smooth on the bottom. Right, cut that off and then we're going to basically draw some lines on here. And cut this back uh, just somewhere in here. Alright, so let me grab my Dremel tool and we'll go to work on that. My Dremel tool here, and I'll just kind of cut away this material. And I'm not going to show my whole process here, but I'm just going to cut that away and then I'll come back. I'm going to take a quick look at the servo here. I mounted a servo arm on it, and I've got my my servo tester just so I kind of know where the center is. And uh, I clipped off 
the mounting points on this side. I'm actually going to clip them off on this side because I don't need them. So on the servo, I clipped off the two little mounting tabs and I scratched up the case a little bit because I'm going to be gluing it to the bottom here. Uh, before I do that, I want to mount this little ball in the end. I put a servo arm on it. We'll drill that out so this ball fits. We'll go ahead and mount that in there. I like to drill a hole just a little bit on the small side so the ball actually threads in. Put a little Loctite on it. And put a nut on the back side. Alright, so now my plan is to glue this onto the bottom like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it back about just a little bit from the edge. And I've got a, this is a grand hauler. If I drop this on and line it up in the right place, this cross beam here just extends underneath this just a tiny bit. So I've done this a couple of ways. Sometimes I just glue a piece of flat um, plastic to the bottom here to cover up this hole so you can't see the servo. Um, this particular one I'm going to just glue it on without that. So I'm going to glue it on like this. And then I'm going to actually paint this deck, but I'm going to probably put a piece of diamond plate over the top of this. It really doesn't, you don't see much through there anyway. So, what I'm going to use is, uh, let's scratch this up a little bit here. Um, I'll use a little bit of, uh, of medium CA glue. kicker here. We're just going to put some glue on this. Now, sorry, I'm taking my sweet time on this, but I want to kind of show the whole thing. Okay, so put some glue on there. Back with a little kicker. And we're going to get this in the right place from the start because you only get one shot at this usually. Just like that. Okay, so now my servo is glued on there. Let's just plug in my servo tester. Look at how cool that is. So now all I have to do is mount my coupler plate and then that little link that we made will just go from here to the coupler plate. And uh, I'm going to show that. Uh, one thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to add an additional couple of pieces of plastic in here and glue them in just to kind of make sure everything is really solid. And this plate then just fits fine yep no problem but you can see how nicely hidden that is 
All right, I'm going to move a few things and we'll get back on this in a minute. So I glued a little scrap of plastic in here just to give it some additional um, purchase. And uh, you can see that this looks pretty good, even if I didn't do anything. Um, you, you don't see much of the servo, but I am going to glue a piece of uh, diamond plate on the top of this, just because. And for that, I'll use this, uh, this E6000 glue that I get from uh, Hobby Lobby. Actually, I'll use this one, it's clear. And uh, so I'm going to glue that on and I'm actually going to paint this coupler deck because it's for a truck project. So once I get that painted, we'll come back and we'll install this, install this, and I'll show you how to program the radio for it. But boy, does that make a nice, clean installation. And this just drops on here so nice now. And, uh, and we have our motorized coupler. Easy. So, be back in a little bit. Well, as you can see, I've got my um, my plate painted, so now I can mount my my coupler. And I'll just go ahead and mount that. Um, get that little return spring in the right place. So something like that. Okay, so I've got that mounted now. Um, I probably should tighten it before I forget. So now I've got my little ball link here, and I've got this one designed to snap up to the ball that's underneath here. So I'll snap that on. Um, after I painted it, I just used the tip of my X-Acto knife to scrape the paint off of that ball. And then this just snaps on here. Like that. And voila, there's our there's our coupler. Now this is gonna have an MFC, that's why this coupler switch wire is here. So that's all there is to it. And now you've got a motorized coupler. Now there's one thing left to do, and that is adjust the servo travel so that we don't overpower the coupler. So I'm going to hook this up to a radio and I'll show you how to do that. So what I've done here is I've taken my servo and plugged it into channel 7 on my receiver. Now channel 7 is this knob right here. So I'm going to use that one for my coupler control. Um, I like to keep this one available and this one available for lights. This one is the transmission. This one is our dual rate switch for the MFC. And so we use that one. And you can use any, you can use a two position one if you want. But the important thing here is to set the uh, endpoints. And in the endpoints, what they do is they prevent the servo from moving too far and trying to overpower the servo. And I do that for two reasons. One is if the servo is trying to work too hard, it's, it's hard on the servo and it'll burn it out. And the other thing is, since this is glued on here, it'll put a lot of stress on this joint that I don't want to do. The servo doesn't really require any power to work the coupler. The servo is not what holds the trailer, it's the latch. This just moves the latch. So, we're going to adjust the end point. So I'm going to zoom in on the, on the screen here uh, a little bit better. I can't... Let's see what it looks like here. Yeah, I can zoom in a little bit here. But I want you to be able to see the coupler. Okay. So on this radio, I'm going to go to the menu. I'm going to go to the setup menu. And I'm going to go down to endpoints. And now we're going to go down to channel 7. And we're going to set the endpoints to like 
5%, some really low number. And we'll set this one down to 5%. And that's where we're going to start. Okay, so now I'm going to plug a battery into this receiver. All right, so now we can move this and it doesn't move hardly at all because we have such a little amount. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to set this over here and we're going to increase this now. And this is slowly moving while we do this. And I can slow I can slowly see the the tip of my coupler coming out now. We'll keep moving this. And there it's all the way. Okay, now it actually took 120%. And on the up, we're going to go down. Okay, so we have 120% and 0%. Now, yours will be different because it just depends on how long this is, where you glue the servo. But now, my coupler works fine. It doesn't overpower and it's ready to install in the truck. So here's our coupler installed on a uh, grand hauler frame. You can see that the, the servo is, well, it's pretty hard to see this way, but it's hidden up in there just fine. Um, it, it works great and uh, it's easy to do. So. That's my new way of motorizing the coupler. The, the Tamiya system has a metal bracket here and then it has you know a big rod that comes through here and the servo is sitting out here in the middle and it's hard to hide. This is great because everything is completely hidden. I have done this on several different trucks. King haulers, globe liners, some European trucks and it fits on every truck that I've tried so uh, it's easy. The only part you need that's not in the Tamiya kit is the is the micro servo. Uh, everything else you use uh, that came in the kit. So that makes it pretty straightforward. So there you go. That's an easy way to make a uh, servo operated fifth wheel coupler. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I had a video before that had a servo mounted up here, linkage through here that was a lot more complicated. That video is going to go away because this is my new method. It's easy. It works great. Uh, analog micro servo when you're in business. So there you go. Hey, thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me with the YouTube rankings. Uh, and please subscribe to the channel and keep watching for, for more Tamiya semi-truck stuff. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.